So if I know that I'm looking at 17 and a half to my zipper join gives me a 35 inch total, I need some good solid seam allowance. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rough cut my middle piece right here. I'm going to rough cut that not at 35, that would be terrible. I will probably rough cut it at about 38 inches, 39 inches, just to make sure I've got enough to go up here and I've got enough seam allowance to be able to join my zipper piece, which joins right there. So I'm going to rough cut this piece right here. I'm gonna rough cut this at at least 38 inches, 39 inches, and that should give me plenty. And I'm going to also, this one I didn't make, tell you to go make a pattern for because it's all negotiable how big you want this. I'm going to rough cut it because I'm going to final cut it at five inches. I'm going to rough cut my foam at at least six inches wide by at least 38 long. So six by 38, 39 inches should be plenty. We've decided with this, with this bag, I wanted my zipper join about right here on the side of the bag. That's where I want to join my zipper. So how long is my zipper piece? How long is that big piece of zipper that goes along the side of the bag? What I did was I took my, oh, sorry, you guys, I'm so sorry. I have to move you all the time. I took my uh, tape measure here and come around move you again, sorry, come around here, and it joins at roughly 11 and a half inches, but I want it to be longer than that. Uh, I want me to give a little bit of a seam allowance, so I'm going to come down at least an inch for a good solid seam allowance on both sides. So when you do that, uh, I'm looking at 12 inches times two, because I have two sides of my bag. So I'm looking at at least 24 inches for my zipper. And I'll show you my piece here. This piece will come here and it will join and I've given myself some extra room. It will come over here and it will come down here and join. And I'm gonna rough cut this at 24 inches because I think that's gonna give me enough seam allowance to join my zipper top to my mid bag. Again, I'm going to give myself a solid six inches and it'll be cut down to five. I've cut my two pieces, my final panels, my mid panels. This is my middle panel. I cut it at at least six inches by at least 39 inches long. I've cut my zipper panel at least six inches by at least 24 inches long. So that will give me enough maneuver room to play. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our fabric on top of our foam and we're gonna start quilting. One thing I wanted to note too is sometimes you may not have quite the length of the foam that you have, but you could piece it together and you ask, can I piece it? Is that working? That will work fine. Your fabric, the you know, foam will piece very nicely together. Take your foam, butt them up to each other. Don't overlap. If you overlap, you're going to have a ridge. Butt them up together and then with your hand thread, just go ahead and do some big looping stitches here just to get them together. Once you start to quilt them, this becomes very structurally sound. So yes, you can piece and I do it all the time. Now I've got my fabric here and I find, I look at that fabric, I find that that's kind of directional. So I kind of want this to be going up and down north and south for me. I don't want it to go east and west because I do want to see that flower in the up position. So I've put my foam on top. Alrighty. And I give myself just a smidgy extra fabric. I've already accommodated for my fabric. Uh, you know, I've accommodated for the size, but I just give myself just a little bit extra. Then what I'm going to do is because I can go ahead and make a snip mark here. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll make another snip mark. Let me see if I can make you sick here. I'm going to make another snip mark up here. Where am I? Just a little bit of extra. Because what happens if I can get it on my left handed? It's not playing with my left hand, is it?
Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tear these. Why? Because cotton fabric, you know, quilting cotton tends to tear on grain. So I'll go ahead and tear it. And I'll go ahead and tear it at the bottom here. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get you so you can see what I'm doing here. And I'll tear it from the bottom. Why do I do it? It's just easy. <laughs> it's just so much easier just to go ahead and tear it like that. So it generally tears on grain. I've given myself a little extra. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my 505 and go ahead and fuse this down. I've laid my fabric on the foam, but I have laid it on the back of the foam because I've written all my notes on this side of the foam here, foam. So I've laid it on the back of the foam. I've gone ahead and ironed my fabric nicely. Alrighty, and then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go and put about halfway, pull it off halfway. Go ahead and use your 505. You don't need a ton. I just need to get it down. Okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and just let, and it's hard for me to do this and hold a camera, but I'm going to go ahead and lay it down and I'm going to smooth it out. It's repositionable, so it's not the end of the world. Okay, I like that. And I'm going to do to the same to the other side. And then I'll use pins and I'll go ahead and pin one up here, one here, one in the center, one here, one here, and one here. I've ironed all of this down and I've kind of used my uh, tacky spray right here to go ahead and get this down and I'm going to take it to my machine. Use your fashion uh, color of your thread. You can use embroidery thread when you're doing your quilting because it has no structure and it can be very beautiful. But when I put my uh, bag together I use a good uh, all-purpose thread because I don't want my bag to come apart. I need a strong thread. The way I do it is I do cross hatches. I'll go ahead and you can either, you can do it from this side or you can do it from this side. And if you're really retentive, you know, you might want to go ahead and make lines where you would do all your cross hatching. You can quilt as desired. So there's a huge amount of flexibility that you have. If you do it from the other side, let's say you wanted to do it simply and you'll just, you know, you can draw lines with your pan here. If you do it from that, make sure that your bobbin thread is the fashion color. Um, it, and again, you can quilt it however you want to quilt it. What I find though is when I do cross hatching, when I do it this way and I come back this way, visually what I find is if I have a hiccup, if I'm off and I'm a little bit wobbly, if I'm off, you just don't tend to see it very much because she's on the diagonal. If you did it straight across like this and, you know, checkerboard piece, then if you have a hiccup, you're going to see it a little bit more. It's going to be a little bit more visually um, apparent. So however you want to do it is fine. Just go ahead and quilt as you desire. I am done quilting and I've done all my cross hatch so that's not looking too badly. And then what you've noticed that I've done is I have outlined my, uh, my pattern. You take your pattern, you put it on top. Oops, let's see if I can do that. You put your pattern on top and then you go ahead and outline it all the way around. I did lose a little bit of real estate when I started quilting. You can kind of tell, boy, I am dangerously close. And so I will go ahead and uh, outline both of those. You can see in pale pink where I've outlined this. And I've also done these pieces. This is my zipper piece right here. And I've outlined, I didn't lose as much real estate on this one, but I did surprisingly on my big one. Um, I did five inches because it's going to come down to four with my seam allowance. I did five inches. Go ahead and outline it. You don't need to worry about this piece. This will all be covered up when I join them together. And then what I've also done is I've done a line midway at two and a half inches because I'm going to eventually cut this zipper apart. Um, so that I can have a left and a right piece of my zipper. So I'll go ahead and do a line here. And the other one, my long one, my middle panel, 
is again five inches and then this just stays straight. Now what I'm going to do with this, the reason why this is important is I'm going to go ahead and sew. It doesn't need to be a tight stitch. It can be a three and a half stitch. In fact, these can be three and a half, so it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to go ahead and sew on that line or maybe a skosh, literally a sixteenth of an inch to the inside of these of these lines that I've drawn. I'm going to go ahead, go ahead and sew all the way around all of your pieces right to the inside because I'm going to cut on that line. But the reason why I do that is because when I sew it, any of the fabric will be sewn down. So I won't have that problem where fabric, see like here, right here, I don't want this to happen because this can be a mess when you're trying to pull it together. So you'll go ahead and sew that down and I'll do that to all my three pieces. I'll go ahead and show you on the zipper piece what I was talking about. Remember I told you to put a line halfway in between it about two and a half inches. And what I've done is I've sewn a little bit of to the left of it, obviously a little bit to the right of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice right up the middle so that I have two equal pieces and I'll sew or I'll cut right to the left of that line right in there. So I will have two pieces for my zipper my and the same principle went for the outside pieces these butted together like that they butted together like that and then i was able to cut down the middle so this way i'm pretty sure that all of my uh, my edges will stay pure and wonderful. It doesn't matter what color you used in your bobbin. My bobbin has to be happens to be white. Reason why it doesn't matter is because your half inch seam allowance will well and truly cover that um, that edging. I have oriented my fabric in what I think is the up position because I wanted that flower to go up. As I talked to you about it earlier in the tutorial. I want my welt pocket three and a half inches from the top. So I took my uh, ruler, I did three and a half inches, and with my chalk liner, I went ahead and made a mark here at three and a half. Now, you know, things are not always perfect. So what I do is I do try to make sure that I am, um, sorry, I am dead on, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I think I'm dead on, Fold it in half this way, in half this way. Put a pin, preferably a straight one. Put a pin, get this nice, put a pin right here at the end of your, you know, you've three and a half down. Put a pin right here. Turn it over and see how close you were. See, because that's my line. You can't really see it real well, but that's my line. That's really close. So now I'm pretty assured, I'm pretty reassured, let's put it this way, that my three and a half is indeed equal on both sides. So I like that. Let's go back this way. So that line is parallel to the top. Great. Now the debate becomes, how big do you want this uh, welt pocket to be? You've got your one and a half inch heavy weight polypropylene from either Country Brook or, or the other one. Um, and so what I did was I cut 44 inches and now I'm going to cut it into four equal pieces. So that's one, two, three, four. Okay, so that, remember my piece here was less than my, this, I think this, I, I like this, I think this is going to be my um, cover for my polypropylene. I think this is going to be the cover, I think that'll look pretty good. So that's what I'm going to do for polypropylene. This, and I'll do that in a few minutes, but this just gives me a visual of where we want our strapping. So do you want it here? Is that, does that look good? That looks good. Let's get an idea of what that is. Remember somewhere between, you know, three and four inches. And what I'm doing is I'm coming, this is two and a half from the edge to the edge of where my strapping will be. That's two and a half. So that's a good, that's a good width. Let's go three and a quarter like we, we did before. 
or I'll play just to be simple and safe. I'll just do three inches. So from three inches here, one, two, three, to the right edge of your strapping. So let's play with this one. We'll play three inches because that'll give me a little bit larger than a seven and a quarter opening. So I like that. And what I'm going to do is I've already made my three and a half inch line up here. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the welt. But remember, the welt pocket straddles this. Let me see if I can do this. I'll do it in a, in a thing here. My welt pocket can go underneath this by about a half. My, my welt pocket, eh, let me see if I can explain this. So we'll go three just because it's simple. Alrighty, so it's three in. My welt pocket doesn't need to go all the way out here. My welt pocket needs to die somewhere between this inch and a half right here. So roughly about right there is where my welt pocket needs to die. Because the strapping covers up that pocket, or it covers up that end of your welt pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and put a, a tag in there. I'm going to go ahead and secure that down. Let's do the same on this side. Remember, we're going to cover this white, so I just want to get it. And we've decided on three, because we can. So my pocket dies right about there and right about there so good okay so how how wide that determines how wide my welt is going to be so my welt is going to be my opening will be hmm, almost eight inches opening i think that's a nice opening but my welt needs to be between this mark and this mark i'm looking at about nine and a half inches this is not terribly precision because you've got a little bit of room to have a problem. So you're looking at nine and a half inches that my welt is going to have to be. So that's good. So I'll go ahead and reinforce this so I know what I'm doing. Okay. So that will help me determine how big, what did I say? Nine and a half? I'm so stupid. Nine and a half. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I want a little bit of a peekaboo. Let me see if I can show you. If you take a look at this one, see how you've got this little bit of a peekaboo right here before I put my zipper in? I'm going to use a contrast fabric. And because I have some stash fabric, oh, do I have stash fabric? I'm going to actually use this. And you're saying, jacks, really? Well, it, it takes in the turquoise of this because once you contrast it out, it's a very small amount that you see. You just don't see hardly any of it. So I can get away with this. I'm going to cut a piece about three inches this way. And it's going to be, you know, about... I'll let it come out a little bit here. This is all negotiable. And let's go ahead and cut this piece just a little bit longer. And this is going to be my welt. So how long was this? This is going to be part of my welt. Let's put it that way. How long is this? Oh, 12 and 3 quarter inches, 13 inches, something like that. So that's fine. Now what I'm going to do, sorry, I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to make some marks on this because now we're going to build the welt pocket and I'll show you what I did. So this piece is roughly three inches wide. It can be wider if you like, but about three works, three and a half works fine. And I've creased it down the center. And if you turn it over, this is where I'm going to start making my marks. I've drawn a line down the center with my friction marker. Nice thing about a friction, you know, see how I do that and you're saying, what did you just do? But if you come at it with a hot iron, there is no more mark anymore. Most of the time, you can have problems, but since I'm working on the back side of my fabric or the wrong side of my fabric, I'm not too concerned. Then, so I made a line, I accidentally had a little wave here. I made a line down the center 
And then I made two more marks at one quarter inch from that center. So you put it at one quarter here, and then you put it at one quarter here. So you've got a center mark with one quarter on each side. Okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start to place this and get an idea of where this is going to stop. This is why I don't tell you, okay, do it this much and do it all of this. Sorry, let me, I'm messing you. Um, this is why I don't do that because everything is negotiable. You may want a bigger pocket, you may not. And the nice thing about this technique is you can build whatever you like. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we're we're good with, just want to make sure we're still about right. We have a three inch inset here, three inches here, and three inches over here. Good, so I'm centered. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my marker here, and I'm gonna get an idea of where I want my piece to be to finish. So I'm gonna put it on the line that I drew, Okay, and go ahead and I'll go ahead and do this a little bit. So I'm going to center that center mark on the line and then I'm going to decide where I want my welt to end. And here you can't see it real well, I'm sorry, but there, that way I can see from here joins to here because I'm pretty confident that this was square. I want my welt to end roughly midway uh, so that my strap covers it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a mark here. Okay. Then I'm going to come in again. You can look at a lot of YouTube, great YouTube videos to show you. I'm going to make a mark here and I'm going to make a mark here. And this is about a good half inch inside. Okay. I'm going to make a little diamond mark. Go back over to the other side. Line your midway mark with your mark of your three and a half inch. I want my welt to end here. Halfway between, come out a good half inch. Now what I'm gonna do And you can take these off because I don't need these anymore. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is with my sewing machine, with a fairly tight stitch, a 2.025, I'm going to go ahead and sew all along this top quarter inch mark. Disregard this little waiver that I had. I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. Don't sew your diamonds. You don't need to sew those. Those are, those are basically telling you, hey, I want you to cut here. That's a cut mark, not a sew mark. And I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. You don't need to necessarily backstitch. A lot of times what I will do is I'll go ahead and sew, and then when I'm finishing my sewing, I'll come along and I'll top stitch over that initial sew line just a few stitches. And I'll be right back. I've gone ahead and sewn all the way around. You can see where I've sewn. I haven't sewn my my diamonds. I've sewn and then I've overlapped it just slightly just so that I didn't have to back tack. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and I'm going to precisely cut it along the center line. Go ahead and use your, if you've got a rotary cutter, go ahead and use that and be fairly precise because I do want a half inch up or a quarter inch up and a quarter inch below that midline. I will not cut the entire way. I will only cut until about here to about here. The rest of it I'll go ahead and do with a scissor because I want more precision. I've cut all the way through the center until the points. I've given myself some room for the points. And the reason why I do it with a rotary cutter is because I can get a very precise quarter inch mark right in here. In here, I'm going to go ahead and finish it with my hand scissors. Let me see if I can do this where you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to cut to the tip of that uh, diamond. Then I'm going to cut into the corners. Let me see if I can do that. I'm going to cut into the corner. I just want to make sure you can see it. Precisely into that corner. Don't overcut it because then you've overcut it. But then I'm going to cut it into the corner. Good. Let's do it on the other side. Cut to the diamond, into the corner, 
and into the corner. Alrighty, I like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to turn it all to the inside. So really what you're going to see is you're just going to see that kind of a peekaboo. So that's going to be very pretty. I'm going to turn everything to the inside and make sure when we were cutting, you know, this big piece, make sure that when you're measuring, because remember we had about a three inch and your welt is right there, make sure that this piece you have enough to turn it in you have enough to turn it inside out so that's why i gave myself some extra room you can always clip it off it's hard to grow it i've gone ahead and turned it all to the inside here and you can see and then what i did was this i pulled these nice and taut and I'll go ahead and do some pressing. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play from the outside and get an idea of how much peekaboo I wanna see. So I'll go ahead and give a bit of a press here to get myself started. A great iron is a great thing. Open that up a little bit more. Because you're working with foam, you are not going to get quite the precise, beautiful, exact results that you would get if you were, say, working on a pair of pants to do a welt or on a jacket. You'll probably get a much finer look. Let me lift this up. You'll get a much finer look on a pair of pants because foam is foam. Foam has dimension. But I do like that much peekaboo. I think that's a good looking peekaboo. So I like that. And I'm going to go ahead and fussy this a little bit. And then once I like what I like, I'm going to go ahead and fuse a little bit of this down to kind of secure it in place before I put my zipper in. I've gone ahead and um, ironed this down to where I think it's going to be a good look and I just have that little bit of a peekaboo. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to go ahead and use stitch witchery. And I don't need a full, I guess you could, you could do the full half inch would be fine and I may go ahead and do that. Sometimes I will cut it in half so I'll go ahead and make it, you know, a pretty long amount. You know, if you take a look at how big this is, I've got it at that much. I just want to get it down. I just want to secure this peekaboo down. So I'm going to go ahead and fuse that to the back side. I've put my stitch witchery down. Doesn't particularly matter where. I put it down and I'm going to go ahead and take my fabric here, put it on one side at a time. I'm going to go ahead and fuse that down. That will keep that peekaboo in place. Where's my, where's my leather piece? I threw it. Where did I throw it? Trisha, where did you throw it? Oh, there we go. That's why I said about three, three and a half inches is plenty in terms of width here. That gives me enough to play with and make sure you've got some on the sides. So when I turn this over, I'll try to lift this up instead. When I turn it over, I've got a nice little peekaboo. I like that. That's not too bad looking. That's going to be cute with my, uh, with my zipper. Okay, now we're going to play the zipper. As I instructed, I'm using a five millimeter zipper from the zipper lady, and I'm debating. If it were me, I'd probably really gun for the purple because I think that's really pretty. It looks a bit Mardi Gras, so I think that's really pretty, but it's not for me, it's for her, and she may not be quite as adventurous as me, so probably a smarter color would be this color, but I can still jazz it and have a purple pull. So that is what I'm gonna do. How much do I, cut my zipper for. I want to cut my zipper a little bit longer than my uh, than my opening. So I've gone probably about an inchish on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and cut it about that long on that side. Oops. Stop it. Okay. Groovy. So that is that. And I'm going to put on this purple pull. Now let me go ahead and I'll show you how to apply the pull. This is a non-locking but a long pull and I'll go ahead and show you how to apply that. 
set my zipper to size. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the pull on. On each end of your zipper, I'm just going to do one pull for the sides, but I'm going to do two pulls for the top, which is going to be fun. So let me show you how to do this. Lightly open it up. Okay. I am right-handed, so I cut the bottom left hand side. And I just cut about a quarter of an inch and I just cut the teeth off. Okay, that's all I want to do is just cut the teeth off. Get those teeth out of the way. Don't want to cut that side. And I'll go ahead. So what I've done is I've just cut the teeth off. So now I have a wedge. Take your pull. Your pull will only go on one way. It's teardrop shape. You can kind of see this is teardrop shape. It can't go on that way. It has to go on this way. And it's the same for both poles, the short and the long. And so what you're going to do is you're going to pull it on, put it on with the teardrop down. Okay. And I'm going to put it right here and I'm going to put it in. It tend, the long poles tend to work really easily. I'm going to go ahead and put it into the top on the left hand channel. Make sure you're in a teardrop down position. Put it on left hand channel. Okay. And lin take it right back up to the top. Okay, you can move your pull out of the way. This you can open up a little bit to give you more maneuver room. I want to put this side in. So I'm going to put this kind of at an angle, not necessarily like, like this. It doesn't want to go like that. I'm going to put it at an angle, just like that. Okay, let me put it down so I can see what I'm doing. Put it in at an angle. Sometimes you'll hear the teeth kind of click together. Dang it, I'm trying to do this for you, sorry. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda hold it with both of my fingers. You can tell my, my thumbs. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the side and I'm gonna go ahead and lightly tap from the top. And there you are, you're on. Does that make sense? Let's do it again. Pull it down from the top, right here. Give myself just right at the top. Put this in a little bit on an angle put it into the channel, and then I'll try to do it here. I'm trying to do it without putting it on the floor. Come on. Oh, there we go. See how that? It's easier if you put it down and you hold it. Okay. And actually, I'm almost correct. I'm kind of pushing one tooth wrong, you know, one tooth wrong, but that's okay because this opens back up and now it's all cool with each other. I'm going to take a hand thread and a hand needle and I'm going to gently make a stop for just to stop me from accidentally pulling out my my head or my pull. So I'm going to go ahead and do just a little bit two swipes of a hand needle just to go ahead and make a barrier for this so that this won't come off. I'm going to make a barrier on this side and I'm going to make a barrier on this side. Be right back. I've done my barrier at the base right here, just a couple swipes through, and I'll go ahead and do a barrier here for you. Just put these together and go ahead and come to the top. Just do a couple runs through with your hand needle. Sorry, I'm trying to do this. We're trying to get you into the camera. Do you see me? And then I'll do I'll do a go ahead and do a knot. Sorry, my alarm just went off. Go up through once, go through twice, and pull. My alarm went off. I need to start dinner. And there you go. This will stop me. This will stop it from doing anything. You know, I can't get any farther through. This will stop me, and this would be great. Now, how do I put this on? Let me show you. I pondered this last night because what I wanted to do was show you how to get this zipper kind of placed very nicely in this welt opening, but also get it placed where, you know, the zipper was secure and I could attach the bag that goes in the, uh, in the pocket here on the front of the bag. So 
I thought about it and then I woke up and my little tiny lizard brain had thought about it overnight and I think I've got a plan where I can give you the best result I can find. What I did was I took a piece of stitch witchery, roughly, you know, the size of the zipper, you know, just tack it off like that. I'm not going to use that one, but I'll always use it. And then what I did was I took it and I folded it a bunch of times and I cut it in half to make instead of a half inch, you know, solid half inch, each side was a quarter inch. So I have a narrower piece of stitch witchery right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, let's go ahead and place the zipper underneath the welt and I'll show you, I think I'm going to fuse those edges. I've put my zipper underneath the welt here and I've got it roughly centered where um, here's my, let me move that over and let you see that. Here's the piece where I've gone ahead and finished it so it doesn't uh, open up on me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to center that zipper nicely and you can see where it isn't, you know, it's all kind of wavy right in here. I'm going to go ahead and center that zipper nicely on that welt opening. And I'd like to make sure that I clear so you can see at this end here that I've cleared the edge of the zipper. It's cleared by this. Let's say you were doing it and you say, oh my gosh, I've done it, but I've accidentally done that. See how that's showing through? Don't despair. Chances are you haven't messed it up because once you put your strapping on and your strapping goes to the center right here, see how I've covered up that error? So just because you screwed it up here doesn't mean it's lost. You don't have to necessarily rip it out. But let's go ahead. Oops, let me move you. Sorry. I'm going to go ahead and move my zipper, get it a bit more center. And I'm going to go ahead and center it on that welt opening nicely. And I'll move my pull. I'm right-handed, so a pull on the left-hand side works pretty well for me as I'm playing with my, uh, with my purse. So I'm going to use it where my pull is over here. I don't need to mess with the pull right this very second. I can leave it out of my way so I can get this thing nicely centered. Okay, so now it's centered pretty well. Nothing's perfect, but it's pretty good. I've got my quarter inch piece of stitch witchery. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put this quarter inch piece right. Oh, let's move that. You idiot. Okay, I'm going to put this quarter inch piece right here on the edge of my zipper tape. Fold it back. Center the zipper back up. Get that zipper centered. Maybe if I use a pin, it might be able to center it a little bit better. Move that stitch witchery. You can see I've got stitch witchery remnant here. I've got a little bit of clear remnant. Go ahead and move that stitch witchery remnant so that I don't see it. And now I'm going to go ahead okay. go ahead and fuse that down. I'm just fusing the top piece down, just the top half. What that does is help that helps keep that helps keep my zipper in a nice position right in here, okay? Then what I want you to do is, you can do the bottom, but we can, we can hold for just two seconds. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the pocket. And now that I've kept this, my pull out of the way, I can move my pull back in. You can keep your pull out of the way the entire time until we start to go so final. So that's pretty nicely centered. Now what I'm going to do is I can do it again. I can turn this over and I'll go ahead and fuse it to the other side of the zipper. 
I've centered my zipper again on my welt opening. I've gone ahead and used my um, stitch witchery and I'm ready to fuse that down. That looks about center. That looks nice. Yeah. So I'm going to fuse this down. The way I normally would have told you, and this is upside down because now my pull is over here. Now I can still move my pull. See, my pull is over here, but my pull can move and move and get out of my way. Okay, now let me turn it back right side up. Normally, the way I would have told you how to do this is I would have told you to go ahead and stitch in the ditch right here where you've got your peekaboo fabric and your fashion fabric. You would stitch in the ditch and you would stitch here along the top and you would have stitched along the bottom, bottom ditch here. No need to stitch on the sides here because those are going to be covered by your tape, by your strapping. But this is kind of a new adventure that I'm trying to see if it will work because what I want to do now is I want to apply my, my pocket to this. And if you take a look here, the way I would have shown you how to do it is you would not have stitch which read it because I need this edging here to be open to actually sew my pocket on. That works very well. You have to have a zipper foot to do it. Oops, sorry. You have to have a zipper foot to do it, but it gets very tight sewing in here. And I think we can do it another way where I don't have to do that. I think I can fuse it down like this and now I can apply my pocket. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. What I want you to do is I want you to make a pocket. I want you to make your pocket. Remember I told you that you have three patterns that I want you to do. You have your main body pattern. That's this pattern right here, this pattern. Then you had a big pocket for the inside and then you had the pocket for the welt bag. That's 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall and you're going to shape flex the entire piece of fabric. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. 